To advertise with us, donate sponsorships and suggestions. Email us at trendafricatv at gmail.com or call us on 773-312-0318 or 773-756-6678. Remember to also follow and like us as Trend Africa TV on Facebook so you can always catch us live. On Instagram as Trend Africa TV 123 or subscribe to our YouTube channel as Trend Africa TV and click on the notification button to watch previous shows. You can also visit our website for your African news, entertainment, fashion and sports updates on www.trendafricaonline.net. Trend Africa TV, redefining Africa. Are you sick or have a health emergency? and don't want to wait in long queues at a hospital, especially during these times of COVID-19. What we know more, Dr. Noun GH will bring the hospital to you. Now at your fingertips, you can see a doctor of your choice. Simply download the Dr. Noun GH app from your phone's app store. Don't wait, hurry now to sign up for free. Dr. Noun GH, your doctor is now at your fingertips. My name is Eunice Cromwell and I'm the business manager of the Ghana National Council. Make sure you always watch Trend Africa TV. Welcome to Africa. Welcome, 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 and thank you once again for joining us this evening for the health segment on Trend Africa TV. This program is entitled Health Talk, and we will be discussing very important issues. Today, we have a very exciting show as we will be discussing telehealth in Ghana and Africa in general. I want to give this time for people to share the feed, invite your friends and family to tune in, and we'll be right back after this break. Thank you. Hi, my name is Wachiame Kwame, the rap doctor, and I have something to tell you. When you need a doctor, you mustn't go anywhere. All you have to do is to call mobile doctor. They will send a doctor to your home, send a flip to come and take your blood sample, I will authorize the pharmacist to bring the medication to your home. Don't go anywhere. Mobile doctors will bring everything to you wherever you are. If you are looking for a discount, just call and give them this code OKMD and they will give you an amazing discount. Mobile doctors is my choice and I recommend it for you. For more information, log on to www.mobiledoctors.net. Mobile doctors. The doctors in your home. Ama, yeah. Internet is so much fun. I know. Corona is trending fast. I know. Some are scary, some are funny, others too. Fake news. Then don't show. Why not go to the right place for Corona news? Spreading lies can hurt. Share the facts, not those memes. You might save a life. Save a life? Yes, save a life. You can play your part. Hmm. Children like us can also play their parts by sharing only the facts. Yes, yeah. Spread only the facts. Play your part too. Be the one to spread only the facts from the Ghana Health Service. Play your part. In case of any emergency on COVID-19, call 112 or 311. This is brought to you by the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service and UK Aid. My name is Eunice Cromwell and I'm the business manager of the Ghana National Council. Make sure you always watch Trend Africa TV. Welcome to Africa! Thank you once again for joining us. If you've been following our program, you know that we've been discussing COVID-19 for quite some months now, and we have a series going on called COVID-19, The Way Forward. Today, we are going to be discussing the same thing. Let me take this time to just thank our sponsors, Ghana National Council, Holiday Africa, and Omama TV. We know that coronavirus has been on the rise and been affecting many, many lives. Today, we are going to be speaking to a gentleman who has developed a tele health program. It's an app. And he's going to explain to us how he came about this idea, how he intends to help Ghana, and how he eventually wants to help Africa in general. So let me take this opportunity to introduce
introduce our guest. Um, he was born and raised in Ghana. He lives in Washington, DC. He has two undergrad degrees in accounting and information science and systems. He has a master's degree in business analytics from Virginia Tech. He currently works in the consulting industry as a data scientist, and he did create the Dr. Now GH to provide quality, accessible, affordable healthcare in Ghana. Mr. Tofor, you are welcome to our program today. Thank you for joining us this evening. How are you? Good. Um, thank you, Eunice, for having me on this program. You're more than welcome. So we're just going to go ahead and dig in. Um, as you can see, some of our other guests are not here yet. Dr. Ofori, who is a pharmacist, will be joining us shortly. And of course, our normal host, um, Empress Mousy, will be joining us shortly as well. But since they're not here, let's dig in and see what's going on, what um, we can do for telehealth in Ghana. So first, will you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about your profession? Um, yeah, sure. So. Um, Professionally, I am a data scientist. Uh, I deal with anything that has to do with data, um, ranging from um, data engineering um, to building um, predictive algorithm um, to help businesses um, to grow their business. Um, and then right now, uh, I created a new app um, called Dr. Now GH. Uh, it is a telemedicine app um, that I launched in Ghana. Um, Ghana is my favorite. Um, place I'm launching it, but I am uh, planning on going into the other part of Africa. Wonderful. So what made you create the platform that you did for the telehealth? What did you see in Ghana that made you just decide to develop this app? Uh, this is a very good question. I, I honestly get this question a lot. Um, so in the summer of um, 2019, um, that's somewhere around um, June, July, I went to Ghana and I was seriously sick. Um, I couldn't um, obviously go to the hospital. And I have a doctor friend, so I called my doctor friend um, to help me um, so that I could be able to get medicine um, from the nearby um, pharmacy. So I called him and he was able to um, diagnose me and um, wrote a prescription for me to go to um, the nearby pharmacy um, to buy a medicine. So I told myself, um, at that time, I was privileged to have someone who is actually a doctor to actually help me through this. Why, why don't I create a platform to help other people who doesn't have this opportunity um, to, to be able to um, talk to a doctor to have this type of services. So um, this is where the idea came. And then I came back to um, the state. Um, I talked to my business partner. Um, his name is Bright, um, who lives in Dubai. And we started um, brainstorming on this. And then Dr. Now was created. OK, so the um, um, application is owned by you and Mr. Bright, who's in Dubai. Yes, yes, yeah. Does, does he have plans to also have that application in Dubai as well, or are you guys only focusing on Ghana right now? So um, right now, our pilot program is in Ghana. So after Ghana, we will move to Kenya and then um, other part of Africa. Um, the reason why we chose Ghana, obviously, is because we are from Ghana, and yeah. we actually want to build um, the platform in Ghana and, and make sure that we actually help people in Ghana first before we move to other part of the world. OK, and I'm going to have you kind of walk us through the program on how to do it. But tell me, in terms of the healthcare system in Ghana, um, how do you think people reacted to this? I know I saw your ad around Christmas time, I think it was, and it was very encouraging. It was one Ghana CD, which, um, I mean, anybody could be able to afford. And you download the app, and you're able to reach out to a provider that can contact you. So how, were, how do people respond to it? Because technology is also sometimes a little bit difficult for some people to use. Um, you will actually be shocked. Um, we have received a huge um, usage with this app since we actually go um, live in um, November 28th. Um, going live, we actually did a beta testing and alpha testing um, with friends and family. And at that time, we had about 200 downloads um, on the app. Um, so since November 28th, um, 2020, so today we have 6,000 downloads. So 
um, you can see how um, Ghanaians are um, using this app, and we are actually making a difference uh, in, in, in Ghana right now. That's really, really wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. So go ahead and walk us through the process. Let's say that someone's watching this right now and they want to tell their family member back home how to use this. How do you go about getting this wonderful app on your phone and using it to find a provider in Ghana? Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, the app is um, in App Store and Play Store. Um, so we actually um, plan to cover every um, store that we have, in, including um, Apple and Android. So all that you have to do is go to um, your platform, Play, uh, Play Store, and type in Dr. Now GH. Um, you will see our logo and then our name. You download the app, and um, you can sign in um, using either Gmail, Facebook, or Apple ID. If you have Apple ID, or you can manually sign up uh, onto the app. Um, if you sign up um, or sign in into the app, um, there is two flows um, to actually take um, to see a doctor. Um, so the first one is the normal schedule appointment. Um, this is designed for uh, the people that want to see uh, a doctor in the future. Um, so if you want to see a doctor tomorrow, um, you can go in, um, click on the schedule appointment um, flow, and then it will take you to the services that um, Dr. Now GH provides. And you can choose any of the services um, ranging from um, COVID-19 um, preventive information um, to female um, health consultation um, to um, sexual health um, consultation. And then when you choose any of them, um, it will take you to the service duty, um, details um, with price um, so that you can know what the actual service is about and the price that you are paying. Um, right now, we are charging one city um, to actually make it affordable for Ghanaians um, to be able to receive this healthcare. And once you, you read and um, see the price, you go to book now, and then it will take you to um the doctors that actually provide this particular services and then if you want to see the doctor's um details um you click any doctor um you find on that um platform and then it will show you the doctor's um credentials like um the school the doctors have been to the um certification the doctors holds and then um the years um the doctor um, has been in operation and then when you select that particular doctor it will take you to the actual schedule appointment where um you you will see the doctor's availability um like um, the days the doctor is available and then the time and then um you choose um any of the dates and time that works um, within your schedule uh, and then you go to um, the payment page, of course, and we have implementing um, mobile payment option um, that uh, supports MTN mobile payment, Tigo Cash, and all the various uh, mobile payments we have in Ghana. And then we actually have um, cre um, cre credit card uh, payment too. Um, so you choose either of the payment that you want. And then once the payment go through um, the particular doctor, um, will accept or reject your um, appointment. So if the doctor accepts your appointment, um, the doctor will wait till the appointment time and then chat with you on the app um, to actually um, figure out which mode of communication you prefer, either video, voice, or chat, call. So. Um, if you choose any of them, and then um, through that, the doctor will use that mode to um, communicate with you on the app to um, perform the um, consultation. And after the consultation is done, the doctor will take um, a screenshot of the prescription, if any, and then send it to you on the app. And you can actually download the prescription and go to um, the pharmacy nearby you to um, get your uh, prescription um we actually have the future uh, function that we will add to it whereby we will deliver the um, medicine to you but currently it's not uh, on the floor right now 
So mm -hmm. this is the first flow. And then the second flow, um, it is designed for urgent care um, purposes. Um, if you need doctor right now, hence our doctor now, um, you click the agent um, care flow. It will take you to the service details, straight to the um, payment. And then once the payment go through, it will send um, a notification to any doctor that um, signed up for agent care services. And then the first doctor that accepts that notification will be the person that will um, contact you immediately. So um, with this flow, you are guaranteed to um, talk to a doctor within five to 15 minutes. Um, okay. so, um, this is something that we actually usually tell our client that we are here to help. So um, within five to 15 minutes, you will get a doctor and then the doctor will contact you and it will be the same um, process as I mentioned earlier. Um, the doctor will start with chat and then determine which mode of communication you want, either um, um, video or voice. And then um, based on your selection, the doctor will use that to call you on the app. Everything is done within the app. Um, so all the functionalities are on the app. You know, that's really good. And I like the fact that you said the five to 15 minutes. As a healthcare provider, I think it's really important that we make people aware that even if you are seeking help, um, if you haven't heard from someone in a reasonable amount of time and you're having something like chest pain or something really going on, you still need to seek emergency services. So I feel like that's the only disconnect with um, telehealth services. Because right now I'm doing telehealth at home. And a patient will call you and say, oh, you know, my chest is hurting. I feel like an elephant's on. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to call 911. Like, <laughs> even if I look at you with this, you know, not much we can do. But I do think it's ideal for those um, semi-acute issues, especially like your UTI, you know, things that you can just get like a prescription. Um, I really admire the fact that you can just download the prescription right away. And I think that um, combining yourself with different pharmacies like around the area, um, I know in Ghana, they have a lot of pharmacies that do like courier delivery. That would also be very beneficial as well. So, um, so far sounds good. Tell me what languages you um, offer. Because I know, so, you know, some people don't speak English. So what languages in Ghana do you offer the doctors can speak to um, talk to their patients? Yeah, so we are lucky. Um, all our doctors speak more than two Ghanaian languages. Um, wow. so, yeah, so we have Ghana, we have Aouza, we have error, and then we have um, Chi, of course, and then English. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Very, very important. Very, very important. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll shift gears a little bit. We'll be talking to Dr. Afori. He's going to be giving us some updates about the COVID-19 vaccine. One thing a lot of people have been asking is exactly when do you have full immunity after you, re you received your second vaccine? So we'll get back to him. He'll dig in and tell us about that. After he talks to us, we'll go back to Mr. Tofor and learn more about the app in Ghana. We'll be right back. Thank you. Check out this beautifully made artistry of coffee tables made from a combination of recycled tires, jute robes, wood, and fabric to suit your style. Yes, we make to order. These coffee tables can help you make a statement in your bedrooms, offices, and living rooms. But remember, we only ship within the USA and Canada after shipping cost is paid. Call Jasper Designs on 1-306-203-2650 or email us at doduyayra at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram at Jasper Love or follow Pearl Yaira Agboka on Facebook. Don't be left out. Please place your orders now. Welcome to SankofaOnline.com. Your number one diaspora news portal has joined with GhanaWeb.com to bring to you the latest news around the world, especially Ghana. Visit our website at www.SankofaOnline.com or you can download our app from the Google Play Store or App Store. Sankofa Online, serving the Ghanaian Chicago community. Welcome to 
My name is Eunice Cromwell and I'm the business manager of the Ghana National Council. Make sure you always watch Trend Africa TV. Welcome to Africa. Welcome back. Once again, this program is proudly brought to us by Ghana National Council, Amama TV, Trend Africa, and Holiday Africa TV. Next, we'll be speaking to Dr. Ofori. He's no stranger on the show. In fact, he's part of our medical panel every other Thursday. He is an assistant professor of pharmaceutical sciences at Chicago State University, a pharmacist by training. Research focuses on drug discovery and neuropsychiatric disorders, including schizophrenia, depression, and substance abuse. Dr. Ofori, you're more than welcome back to the program today. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing very good. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to awesome. dig in. Go ahead and tell us what's going on with COVID-19, the vaccines, what can people expect? And the major question that everyone's been asking me is, when are you free? Basically, when can you get full <laughs> immunity after you get your second vaccine? When is all this going to be over? What can you tell us today? Great. Uh, so Great. thanks to everyone that is listening. Um, I'm going to be brief. You know, we've, we've heard a lot of things about COVID and uh, we know that we've been waiting for vaccines and uh, we've been blessed to have at least a couple of, you know, vaccines that are doing a little uh, more than good to, to people that are um, having the infection uh, and then to the general population as well. Now, as we speak, uh, there are about more than six different uh, vaccines that are out there. But then in, in the United States, two vaccines have been approved for emergency use. Uh, the one from Johnson & Johnson is still under review. Uh, the great news is that as we speak now, is, uh, in the US, we have about close to about 57 million doses that have been administered. That is a lot. Uh, what it means is that it is more than the number of positive tests right so mm -hmm. so as we speak we have about 28 million people infected or tested positive uh we do have a lot of vaccine vaccination more than we've tested for covid which is great news right now uh we do have out of every 100 people about 15 of them have received at least one uh vaccine dose either from moderna or pfizer uh what it what it tells you is that um we are still below uh, the number that we expect. Going at this rate of 1.6 million doses a day, uh, we are projected to uh, vaccinate 75% of the population in the United States in nine months. So if you put that in perspective, uh, it, mean, it means that right now we are, in, we are in, uh, in February, right? So if you add nine months, we are almost at the end of the year uh, before we can get 75% of the population inoculated. What does that mean? Now, there's another component of the vaccination uh, that is a little worrisome, is that there are new, new strains of the virus coming up. So if you don't vaccinate quicker, you're gonna have a situation where you might have to need a booster shot um, in order to you know, give people uh, the protection that they need. Uh, as we speak now, if you suffered from an infection or got a vaccine, we know for a fact that your, your immunity lasts a minimum of about five months, right? And, and we project that it could be more than a year. Uh, but at the same time, that the, that, that the new variants that are coming up raises the concern that maybe your antibodies might not be able to combat the new variants, right? And talking about the new variants, about three of them that are very popular, the one from UK, which is driving the numbers up in Ghana, even in the US, uh, there's the, the B, that's B117. And we have B11351, uh, which is coming from uh, South Africa, which has also been shown to be a little bit higher, higher transmission and also uh, higher mortality associated with it. The Brazilian one is looking really bad in, in a sense that uh, there have been some studies that have shown that antibodies are not able to recognize uh, the spike proteins of these variants. That is concerning. And, and a couple of hours ago, there was another study that came out showing that uh, there's been a hybrid of two variants in California. So one thing I want listeners to understand is that you can actually in get infected with two different variants. Um, so what is happening is that the, the B117 is mixing with another one, I think it's B1291 or something like that in California. 
given as a hybrid variant that has been proven to have uh, resistant to some of the antibodies we've already developed. So if you ask me about vaccination, yes, we're doing great. 1.6 million doses um, a day, uh, you know, about 15 people out of 100 being vaccinated. That is a little bit below the belts that we want, but then we are still going in the right direction uh, in terms of vaccination. There's still a lag. Uh, as we speak in the United States, about only 78% of the doses that are delivered to the states have been administered. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. There's a chunk of doses that are sitting there that hasn't been administered. So we are still doing catch up, especially in the US. Now, those of us listening to us from Ghana, yeah, there's been some words from the president talking about we will get some vaccines, hopefully in the summer. Great news, right? We need to be ready for um, some of the logistic components of vaccination, which include cold chain system, testing our vaccination uh, facilities that we have already for other um, 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 infectious diseases, right? So these are all things that um, I would say will help us to be able to, you know, roll out the vaccination in a better way. So how close are we to herd immunity? Because I know last time we spoke on the show, we always speak about, you know, that is what um, Dr. Fauci always talks about. So considering the amount of people that are being vaccinated, how how close are we to herd immunity for the United States? Or And I know we haven't started in Ghana yet. My next question is, what vaccine is Ghana going to be receiving? Do you know? Yeah, so so let me take the, uh, the herd immunity to begin with. So th there will be no herd immunity until we have herd immunity for everyone in the world, right? Uh, we will be deceiving ourselves if the rich countries can even inoculate themselves and leave the poorer countries out. We will be doing ourselves a lot of dis disfavor. Uh, so in that respect, uh, the, I think the, the, the French president just came out with a statement uh, that the WHO is aware of it and conscious about, you know, working with COVAX, which is the organization to provide vaccines about up to 20% of the population uh, through the COVAX program. Uh, okay. As we speak, 186 million doses of vaccines have been distributed or have been administered in the whole world, right? Uh, that puts that at, I think, roughly 6.3 million doses a day. If we go at this rate in the whole world, it will take us, I think, close to about five years to be able to achieve 5, 75% of um, immunity. Uh, so we have a long shot to go. Um, there's a lot of talks about, you know, these vaccine companies that are making these vaccines, trying to tweak the structures of or the vaccines to be able to match up with the variants that we are identifying. Very smart way to look at it. That's a good thing about genetic vaccines. So uh, that is that is how the long shot from, you know, the, the bird's eye view looking at how we can achieve herd immunity it's a little bit far away, but then with all these different vaccines being approved, the hope is that we will now be able to get enough doses to drive the numbers up in terms of vaccination and be able to contain the, uh, the virus. Uh, when it comes to Ghana, uh, yes, the chances is that it's gonna be AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca uh, type of vaccine that we're looking at. Um, and, and that one is because I don't think Ghana be ready for the cold chain that we have with Moderna and Pfizer yeah, at this thinking. point. So it makes a lot of sense that we'll be going for uh, the AstraZeneca doses. And and again, there are more, uh, I would say, the adenovirus-based uh, platforms that will be coming up uh, soon, including the one from Russia and, and, and other countries. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these, you know, low, uh, low cap per capita countries like Ghana, uh, will be resorting to this type of vaccines. And do you think, um, so the vaccines here, at least for now, are free. Um, what are we looking at in terms of Ghana? Will it also be free to the public as well when they start rolling it out? I know there's going to be an um, official announcement from the um, information minister. I believe it's tomorrow. I saw something on their on their page. I know they'll be explaining their whole rollout. But for anybody who's listening, will the vaccine be free? I know you have a lot of connections in Ghana, so I'm, I'm yeah. pinching you a little bit. Yeah, so 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 the the, whole, the good news is that you know the WHO and you know all these teams of agencies come to get came together and said this is a pandemic, so nobody should be, should be paying for this vaccine, right? So right off the bat, that kind of covers it. Uh, I'm pretty sure when it gets to Ghana, nobody is going to have to pay for that. The government will absorb the cost, 
And now what we have to battle with is the hesitancy, right? It's not the vaccines don't prevent infections. It's actually vaccination that does. So we need to start educating people about, you know, the importance of actually getting the, the vaccine and the risk and benefit ratio with, with that. So that is what I'm worried about when it comes to Ghana. Yeah. Also, I want our viewers to be aware that according to the CDC, Ghana is a level four um, for traveling, which means that you should only go there if extremely necessary. Um, I know that they've been enticing us all with the very low tickets, but I just want to encourage us all during this time frame, if we could just remain here, if you really don't have anything to do back home. Just yeah, the, the, the reason for that is our positivity rate is in the double digits, right? It went as far as almost 30% at a point, just some few few uh, um weeks ago so it it's it puts us at that risk level of um, a lot of people getting infected so i understand the strict regulations that have been put in place uh to restrict people uh from gathering and making sure that they wear their mask it's just sometimes you know implementing some of these policies have their own downsides and i've seen a, col a couple of things that you know raises the eyebrow about how we're going about these things but notwithstanding I will entreat everybody who is listening uh, that please make sure that you wear your mask. Uh, the B117, uh, all these other variants that are coming up, you might have to double mask uh, in order to prevent the infection uh, because they are, they are highly transmissible. And mm -hmm. we've seen that some, um, especially the B1351, can actually increase the mortality rate when people get infected. Very interesting. You talked about the double masking um, that was recommended also by the CDC. So remember, you need to wear your surgical mask and then you can put your cloth mask on top. Also, make sure you're washing your cloth mask. Um, I had a patient whose cloth mask looked like it could have been something that you used to wash dishes. It was just so dirty. And I'm like, at, at this point, you probably you don't need another one or do two surgical masks. So let's let's really keep that in mind. Now, what I want to ask you is that for the new hybrid that you talked about, are they the same signs and symptoms? Because I feel like we are just really learning about more signs and symptoms, even of just the regular COVID. So are there other signs and symptoms we have to be looking for with the hybrid or is it just the same thing or more aggressive? Yeah. So a, a lot of the time it doesn't, uh, the, the patho pathology of the disease wouldn't change significantly. Uh, okay. However, maybe the prognosis or the outcome of the disease will change um, as the variances will change. Uh, what it means is that your body's immunity might not be able to recognize um, some of the, I mean, the, the spike proteins or something like that. Because what we realize is that most of the changes, even though there are other changes in the genetic makeup of the virus, uh, what we're interested in is the genetic makeup that happens on the spike protein. So yes, the one that I spoke about, which is a hybrid between the B117 and B1429, uh in identified in california tends to have some resistance to antibodies that we already developed that is a little concerning but the good news is that it's not a predominant variant right uh one thing that we are not doing well uh across the whole world except for uk is sequencing so you have to literally sequence the genetic makeup maybe it wouldn't be every case but then maybe uh 10 out of 100 that is what UK is doing. In the US, it's about three out of thousand. Uh, we are not doing well in terms of that. That is way below 1%. So that is something that I'm worried about because picking up these variants, you have to actually sequence and know the changes are happening. Or like what happened in UK, they noticed that the number of cases was all of a sudden just going out of control. And yeah. somebody decided to just check the genetic uh, make up for the virus that is in circulation. So that is how they identify that. And the same thing in Ghana. They thought they were still dealing with the original coronavirus, right? They sequenced and they found out it's actually coming from the UK. The B117 mm -hmm. is driving up the cases. So um, looking at this, the, the hybrid and all these changes, which coronaviruses do all the time, uh, we just have to step up our game when it comes to are preventing the infection, or if you have to get a vaccination going, we should do that. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Foy. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go back to um, Mr. Foy and talk more about the um, application that he has in Ghana. Stay tuned, share the feed, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Are you sick or have a health emergency? 
and don't want to wait in long queues at a hospital, especially during these times of COVID-19. What we know more, Dr. Noun GH will bring the hospital to you. Now at your fingertips, you can see a doctor of your choice. Simply download the Dr. Noun GH app from your phone's app store. Don't wait, hurry now to sign up for free. Dr. Noun GH, your doctor is now at your fingertips. Carry some of honey, others too. Fake news, then don't share. Why not go to the right place for Corona news? Spreading lies can hurt. Share the facts, not those memes. You might save a life. Save a life? Yes, save a life. You can play your part. Hmm, children like us can also play their part by sharing only the facts? Yes, yeah, spread only the facts. Play your part too. Be the one to spread only the facts from the Ghana Health Service. Play your part. In case of any emergency on COVID-19, call 112 or 311. This is brought to you by the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service and UK Aid. Hello, my name is Neil Atilai, aka Mr. Sterling. Welcome to Sterling Plus. Here we sell quality branded Sterling Plus shoes, affordable men's suits, talk of authentic African prints sold in Europe, polo shirts, trousers, jeans, watches, sunglasses, men purse, and anything that has to do with fashion. Our prices can be compared to none. We deal with the manufacturers direct, meaning you have the best of the less. We are located at Westland, close to Starbite. Just walk in and we will entreat you the best of the best when it comes to men's fashion. My name is Eunice Cromwell and I'm the business manager of the Ghana National Council. Make sure you always watch Trend Africa TV. Welcome to Africa. Welcome back and thank you for joining us once again. We're going to go ahead and um, talk back to Mr. Kwabi. Now he was telling us about his program. So in terms of COVID-19 management, and I know that this program was probably um, thought about, you know, in other ways to help people. But right now, one of the biggest things that we're dealing with is COVID-19. So how do you see this application helping people with COVID-19? Yeah, so um, the patient that we have been um, able to help, um, I think about 20% actually come to the app um, to seek information about um, the COVID-19. Um, um, virus and how to um, prevent um, that from happening to them. So they are being able to come to the app, um, talk to the doctor, and uh, our doctors are skilled enough um, to show them the pre um, preventive measures um, that will help them not to contract this uh, virus. Okay, great. And so um, you mentioned earlier that you see this program going um, different places you talked about going to Kenya. Do you think that telehealth is the new way of healthcare in general? Yes, it is. Um, it is um, and even COVID-19 actually um, shows that um, telehealth can actually help um, in many aspects. Um, before um, COVID, um, people will go to the hospital, spend like um, hours and hours and hours before um, seeing a doctor, especially in Africa. Um, right now, you can stay in convenient in your home um, within five to 15 minutes, and you can get the quality um, healthcare that you can get from any um, state, state of the heart um, hospital around the globe. So I think um, telemedicine is here to stay and um, people should actually start using it um, because it is the solution um, to our COVID um, problem right now. Yeah, I, b I believe so too. I'm a really strong believer in, um, in telemedicine. Um, I think that it's going to be here for a long time. It has been here already, but I feel like COVID-19 has really shown a lot of deficiencies in healthcare. 
And with those deficiencies, we've been able to really um, boost up all of our services because anyone has the capability of doing telehealth. Um, look at the way you have your application. Um, a lot of companies, you know, when you think about the apps and everything, how you can just even FaceTime a patient if they need something. Um, before your app came along, I mean, I have friends and family from back home that call me all the time. Eunice, what do you think about this? In that way, I'm still it's still a telehealth, you know, type of appointment, even though they're just my friends. So I think that this method has been around for a long time. So we are very grateful that you brought this to us. Um, I was looking in the chat and somebody said they were going to go right away and download it. So go ahead and tell us again where we can find it so people can be able to download this wonderful app and start using it. Yeah, um, so I actually have a story um, that happened um, on 24th December. So on, on 24th December, um, a lady um, actually made an appointment and um, her baby was seriously sick and she was scared to go to the hospital um, because of um, COVID-19, obviously. And it was around like uh, 2 a.m. Ghana time. So um, he, um, she actually booked the appointment. Uh, I talked to her and she was like, I can't go to the hospital. My 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 baby is sick. I don't know what to do. So um, I assigned a doctor to her and um, the doctor was able to um, help the baby during that like time and um the doctor gave her some preventive um, measures um for the baby to be stable so um and then he actually advised her to take her to the hospital the next day so um the um the mother went to the hospital and told the doctor what happened and the doctor did the personal checkup and everything and he was like oh who actually helped you through this? And it was like, oh, wow. it, um, a telemedicine was like, that person saved your baby's life. So we are here um, to save life. We, we are here to help people um, navigate through um, this um, COVID-19 uh, crisis. And the app is available on um, any um, stores, app store, play store. You just go in, type in um, Dr. Now VH, and you will see the app right there. So what happens if someone doesn't have a smartphone? So is there a way that someone could, do you have a, a method that someone could maybe call this, um, call the platform and be able to get help like that? Because not everyone has a smartphone. Yeah, so we actually have our WhatsApp line. Um, okay. If you go to our WhatsApp line or any of our social media handlers and you say you are in need of medical care, we are here to help people. We will find a doctor to help you uh, with that. Okay, that's awesome. Dr. Ford, do you have any questions about the app, the telehealth app in Ghana? We can't hear you. Yeah, so thank you very okay. much for uh, the great work that you're doing in terms of delivering healthcare to people of Ghana. Um, one question that I had is that how, how do you bridge, you know, whenever these things come up, like Eunice mentioned, not everybody has smartphones. So how do you bridge the use of this platform between the poor and the rich, right? Uh, you don't want to create a system where it's only for people who are already advantaged. Yeah, so right now, um, price is a huge factor. Um, and right now we are charging one Ghana city. It's close to nothing. So um, because of our price, um, we are getting um, patients from all over um, income structure. We are we are getting patients from um, like uh, people working in the market. Um, mm -hmm. we, are, we are getting patients from um, like colleges, high schools, um, bankers. Um, so um, because of all the price that we are charging right now, mm -hmm. we are bridging um, the gap um, between um, the rich and the poor and providing the same quality health care, uh, regardless of your social um, uh, status. So is there a time limit on how this, I mean, so for instance, let's take, I call or I test the, the, the line, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a time limit for me? Like, hey, you have 30 minutes to get, you know, everything you need because one Ghana city that to me, it looks, it looks, it sounds very good to people, but then is there a catch to it? Um, so 
Originally, the app was designed um, to cater for um, consultation for 30 minutes. But during, during our beta and alpha testing, we actually saw that um, people don't respond to messages as um, frequently in Ghana. So it's actually open so you get your full consultation. Wow. That's good to know. Impressive. Yeah, that's really helpful. So, so then, then, so what, what happens, uh, you know, some, because Ghanaians have this feeling that if the doctor doesn't touch me, right, uh, it means I, I didn't get looked at, you know, that's, that's a translation, Dr. Nansham. Uh, so when it comes to telemedicine, what measures have you put in place to be able to kind of put the education up in there to be able to help people and convince them to patronize this platform? um it is funny you mentioned that we have we actually haven't encountered that um like that um use case before every person that we talk to are ready to tell us what's wrong with them and um we have had smooth um uh, sailing so far but one thing that we are planning to implement is we are working with um some companies um, to actually help us design a smart watch that will track um, people vitals um, and we are going to integrate that with the app um, so that doctors can actually see your your vitals like seven days in the past um, so that they can know um, all of this information before um, actually um, giving you diagnosis that's a fantastic that's idea. I love that. Me too. I love that. <laughs> yeah, using technology, man. That's that's the way to go. Yeah. So so I mean, what if I were to ask you, what are the major hurdles? You know, I know you might have told us all the success. What were some of the challenges you had when you started? Um, most challenges is technology, of course. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are using technology to battle technology. Of course, um, the header would be technology. So um some part in Ghana have um, low like um, quality um like um, phone services so 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 sometimes it is difficult to actually talk to a patient on the video uh, or voice so um one one measures that we are um, implemented is if we try the app and the video and the voice call is not um, working, um, we will try as much as possible to call you um, on your WhatsApp, on your phone, like every possible way to get in contact with you so that we can be able to um, deliver um, the healthcare that you deserve. So um, the most challenges is technology. And then the other challenges is trust. Um, Ghanaians um, see things that is close to um, free as a scam. So um, we actually um, encountered that problem at the beginning. Um, someone will come to our social media handle and was like, you guys are scammed, please prove, prove it. So we will actually um, pair them with a doctor. And mm -hmm. then when the doctor gives them um, their um, consultation, they'll be like, oh, it's true. So actually those people, our, our main advocates because they will go outside and tell people that hey these um people are for real and they are here to help great great so that takes me to my next question sorry i don't mean to hijack this no, conversation okay. but it's really interesting no, of course I <laughs> so so security becomes an issue right uh i mean maybe ghana not really but here is it's an issue so how do i authenticate the person that i'm speaking to so now if you call a service line Oh, I'm this, that, that, I have this badge number, right? Do you have anything in place? I mean, quality assurance kind of way of looking at things, right? Uh, to make sure that I'm not just talking to somebody just, you know, but I'm actually talking to a, a, certif a board certified doctor. Yeah, so we we actually pride ourselves in getting the most qualified people um, to work on our platform. We don't... Um, we, we, we don't bring people to our platform without doing our due diligence, right? Um, okay. This is health. Um, this is people life that we are dealing with. So we actually do investigation to make sure that your certificate is in good standing. 
And then um, the school that you actually went, we actually go back uh, to actually make sure that you are who you say you are, right? So okay. um, we actually do our due diligence because although we are here to help, we actually don't want to receive. <laughs> so that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So to actually ensure that um, we actually go through a process before we actually sign up a doctor to use on our app. Do, do you guys collaborate with pharmacy, like some pharmacies in the country? Yeah. So right now, so um, we are in phase one of our um, effort to uh, make um, healthcare affordable in Ghana. Um, so the phase one is bringing um, the um, healthcare app. Um, phase two is bringing um, pharmacy delivery app, um, and those app will be linked together. So that if a doctor prescribe a medicine for you, mm -hmm. uh, a doctor will enter it into the pharmacy app. It will go to the nearby pharmacy that um, is close to you. And then um, there is two options. Either you can walk to the pharmacy to get your drugs, or we are implementing um, a delivery services that the person will go and pick the uh, medicine and bring it to your um, house for you. So all for one Ghana cities. That's that's oh, Ghana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, until the COVID is being um, sorted after. Good. Yeah. All right. What you a know. blessing. I mean, I think I think it's just admirable that you've even taken on this task to really show support through COVID-19, charging the one Ghana CD. And let us also take this time to thank the awesome doctors that are behind this, because to my understanding, they are also volunteering. Can you tell our viewers about how, I mean, what the doctors are doing too? Because that's, that's really big. Like, I don't know if I am blessed or people actually believe in this vision. Everybody that is working on Dr. Now is volunteering their hours. So from the doctors to the marketing, and to our advisors, to everybody is volunteering their hours. And like um, the first doctor we actually talked to was um, Dr. Stanford in Kumase. I called him, I was like, uh, doctor, we need a doctor on our platform. He was like, oh yeah, okay. He was like, sign, sign me up. I was like, wait a minute. We actually have to make sure that your certificate is good before we actually sign you up. So we did and he have been working for us for free. Um, I call him 12 a.m. in Ghana to actually pair him with a patient. And then he actually um, helped us to recruit uh, more doctors uh, to be on the platform. So every doctor we are on there, um, Dr. Danso, Dr. Ajemai, um, Dr. Opoku, Dr. Stanford, Dr. Bismarck, everybody there is doing um, free volunteering. And I thank them for actually believing in this vision and believing in helping um, Ghana. We also really appreciate them. And thank you for mentioning their names. We are, we are very, very excited about them and we appreciate their service to the community and to the empowerment of healthcare in Ghana. So congratulations to all those doctors that are taking their time. And it's not easy in the middle of the night to be called and you're not getting paid for it. So we really, really appreciate that. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and read some of the comments from our feed. Um, we have one from Anana Yao. He says, great work, bro. Um, Mr. Samuel Janapo, that's actually my uncle all the way from Liberia, says that I'm proud of you, Eunice. God bless you, uncle. Thank you for your support. Um, Ibrahim Mohammed, he is a, a you know common person that comes on. We thank him so much for his support. He says that, thank you. He's rushing to get the app right away. So you have a new customer already. Um, and then we have congratulations, bro, from a Billy Jr. Great work from Akua, I mean, Akua excuse me. And then um, president of the Ghana National Council, Mr. Pakwasi Sam says that a great app to use in Ghana. Tried a few times when it was having some technical difficulties. However, it was nice that one of the doctors reached out to me personally to offer me assistance. So once again, that's a great message from our president. Thank you. That's the president from Ghana National Council. And then from Cuddy Queen, we have great work. Proud to be a Ghanaian. Thank you all who have been watching. Continue to share the feed. Even if we leave, this is a very good program that you can share with your family and friends back home. 
so they can be able to download the app and get telehealth services through this time. We're gonna go ahead and take another short break and we'll be right back after these messages. To advertise with us, donate sponsorships and suggestions. Email us at trendafricatv at gmail.com or call us on 773-312-0318 or 773-756-6678. Remember to also follow and like us at Trend Africa TV on Facebook so you can always catch us live. On Instagram as Trend Africa TV 123 or subscribe to our YouTube channel as Trend Africa TV and click on the notification button to watch previous shows. You can also visit our website for your African news, entertainment, fashion and sports updates on www.trendafricaonline.net. Trend Africa TV, redefining Africa. Hello there. Welcome to Trend Africa, where we give you the best of live streaming across all states in the US. We also do web designing, event planning, emceeing, app creating, and promotions. Or if you want to shoot an advert for your business or a show, you can contact us on plus one seven seven three three one two zero three one eight. For more information, you can visit our website at www.trendafricaonline.net and also on our social media platforms at Trend Africa TV. You can download our app Trend Africa Online on the Google Play Store and App Store. Trend Africa, redefining Africa. My name is Eunice Cromwell and I'm the business manager of the Ghana National Council. Make sure you always watch Trend Africa TV. Welcome to Africa. Welcome back once again, and thank you for staying with us throughout this evening. Um, Dr. Ofori has some things that he would like to share with us. So, Dr. Ofori. All right, right. So, I just wanted to uh, to let our listeners know that uh, the much-awaited trial, which is trial of the vaccines in pregnancy, has begun. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about whether this is safe in pregnancy. Uh, the Pfizer and BioNTech um, vaccine has started a trial in pregnant women that are 24 to 36 weeks pregnant, uh, trying to evaluate whether uh, the vaccine is safe and efficacious and it's not causing any problems to pregnant women. Um, also, they're gonna evaluate if the immunity of the mom can be transferred to the, the child. So this is some interesting news coming our way when it comes to vaccines. And for those of us in Illinois, uh, and at least a lot of places in the US, uh, vaccination is happening in your pharmacies as well. And your health clinics are close to you, which is something that is very interesting in a sense that it will actually broaden the, uh, the capacity to vaccinate people. So before you know, uh, I let Eunice take over. One thing you should bear in mind is that uh, the vaccines offer some protection, even if it's not anything. It's better than not having or having anything or contracting the virus itself. So I will entrust our everyone out there. If it's your turn, please go ahead and get it. Uh, I can speak for Illinois, but at the moment you can go to coronavirus.illinois.gov forward slash s forward slash vaccination dash location as the website where you can actually look and see when uh, it's your turn or which area to go to for vaccination. But we're actually in phase 1A and B uh, where people aged 65 and older, people who are essential workers, uh, healthcare professionals are actually getting the vaccine. So if you have any questions again, Leave a comment in 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 our in our pay, on our page, and we respond to you uh, as well. Thank you, Eunice. So, you know, I want to ask one more question. I know we're talking about coronavirus, but this program is the way forward. So we do hit on some other things. Can you tell us a little bit about the Ebola? I did see briefly um, that there was some isolated cases found in Guinea, I believe, and then some in Nigeria. I know Nigeria has been preparing for a long time for like a second wave of Ebola. So can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, so I, I haven't read entirely the the publication that came out with the outbreak, but what I know for sure is that uh, actually a genetic vaccine was approved for mm -hmm. Ebola as well, uh, I think early last year, um, making it something that is very um, essential when it comes to Ebola outbreaks in Africa because you saw what it did to the people that actually got it. It, it was devastating. Um, the the fatality rate for that is more than 90% uh, as compared to less than 2% with coronavirus. So that is something that I'm a little bit worried about. But the good news is uh, I think they actually approved one of those genetic vaccines uh, to help people uh, with the, uh, the, the um, uh, Ebola uh, outbreak in Africa as well. So again, we should be watchful you know someone i think it was Gates that said it that the next calamity or disaster that's going to happen in the world is not going to be a, a third world war it's actually mm -hmm. humans versus microbes and um, this has taught us a lot of lessons uh they, someone said that the whole world's coronaviruses will fit into this bottle right um and and that has actually stopped the whole world so mm -hmm. It just goes to tell you how important it is to take public health um, serious. Very important. And I think it's also um, well noted to just make sure that we are taking care of ourselves because there's a lot of things that can affect us. When you think about Ghana in general and the malaria and, and now the Ebola, and then we have COVID-19. So let us all just be wise. Let us encourage our friends and families to just really mask. Um, it was very discouraging to see the way people were behaving in Ghana, especially around Christmas time, like nothing was going on. You know, it was like as things were regular. And then now we're watching the news and we're seeing all these prominent people dying. Yes, they're reporting the prominent people. But what about those poor people in the village that were visited by these people who also passed away? It's very, very sad. Yes. Death rate yes. is really up and no one is really... It's like it took all this to have all these numbers up before people are like, OK, coronavirus is real. Meanwhile, it's been announced and told so many times. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, we, did, we did interview a, a couple of people back home and, and what we got was that, oh, coronavirus is not around because I haven't seen anybody got, get it. Right. Uh, as we speak now, there's reports that came out this morning that even in the United States, life expectancy has dropped by three years. Okay, mostly because of COVID, people having drug issues, people having other COVID-related deaths. Uh, and, and it's actually cost the world billions every day. I think it's almost like $700 billion every single day. So you can imagine how, how the virus has impacted our lives. But if you're in Ghana, where when we are at 3,000 active cases, our mm -hmm. ICUs and all our healthcare systems were choked, Mm -hmm. You can imagine if even if 10 percent of the population have, have the coronavirus, people are just going to fall off left and right. I'm not prophesizing doom, but we just have to be careful uh, the yeah. way we act in terms of our risk assessment. We have to be very careful uh, in Ghana. I agree. And, you know, Dr. Afori is a mental, a mental health expert. And Kwabana, I saw on your um, app that you have a space for mental health. How are the Ghanaians responding to that? Because we already know there's kind of a stigma. So are people using that application when they need it? Because in general, we know that COVID-19 has really increased mental health um, breakdowns, right? Anxiety, agitation, maybe someone who was like borderline schizophrenic probably are having more episodes or having exacerbation. So how would you say that people are responding to that part of the app? Um, uh, good. Uh, because of the privacy we actually give them. So in Ghana, um, before you can actually uh, talk to a doctor about your mental health, you have to go through a series of people before you can actually talk to the doctor. But this app um, grants that privacy. Um, you just talk to the doctor. And I think we are we are having a um, few people that comes in um, with some counseling and that kind of stuff. So yeah, they are actually uh, doing that too. Sounds good. Well, we are going to wrap it up here. So at this time, I'd like to give our, our guest first the chance to go ahead and give his closing remarks. Um, once again, we thank you so much for coming. I think there's a few more comments on our feed. Let me just get them so we don't forget them. 
Um, a Nazar KT says the epitome of Ghanaian um, ingenuity. Thank you very much. Um, Cuddy Queen says, yes, I was going to ask the Ebola question. Great question, Eunice. Thank you, Cuddy. We are just trying to make sure that we are covering all of our bases. Um, also, for all of our any of our viewers, if there's a topic that's really interesting to you, please let us know um, so we can be able to find the appropriate professional to bring on and present it to you. So at this time, I'd like to give Kwabana the chance to go ahead and give your closing remarks. And once again, on behalf of Trend Africa TV, Ghana National Council, Holiday um, Africa, and Omama TV, we really appreciate your presence and we appreciate you taking the time to join us this evening. Um, well, is, uh, my viewers, um, COVID is real. I actually lost um, a close family member um, due to COVID. Um, so don't 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 joke with um, this um, virus. Uh, it kills people. Um, so any any um, medical advice that you get from um, Dr. Nadih up or from any person, um, please follow it up and um, keep yourselves um, safe. Um, the next thing that I will say is Dr. Nadih has come to um, help um, people in Ghana. Um, we are here to make sure that um, we actually come together to find our way through this um, pandemic in Ghana. So um, go to um, your um, store, um, App Store, Play Store, download the app and start talking to your doctor now. For joining us. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So, Dr. Ofori, what do you think about the program today? Uh, it was great. It's enlightening uh, in the sense that uh, healthcare delivery in Ghana has always been an issue, right? Um, the way we, we assess and, and do things back home, sometimes it's substandard. Uh, we, we have rules that govern how healthcare facilities are supposed to operate, but sometimes they are not strictly followed. Um, we need availability of healthcare because not too many people have the money to afford uh, the top-notch kind of healthcare system. Uh, in Ghana, pharmacies are like the point of contact uh, for a lot of people. And now that this is coming in with telemedicine, uh, this is really going to complement the whole idea of um, delivering health to our people. So I really like that idea uh, of, of actually providing health to people just through their phone or any kind of uh, platform that they have. So it, it was, was wonderful hearing all of this good stuff. I agree. And I think that the way the healthcare system is in Ghana, um, it needs all the help that it can get. Um, even when you look at how structured America is, I mean, they are relying heavily on telehealth. So then you think of a, you know, a third world country. I think that this is going to be a brilliant thing. It's going to reduce some of the caseload on the doctors. Um, I've spoken to some doctors that just say that there's just way too many patients for them. I think yeah. the ratio yeah. of one, you know, one doctor to patient is overwhelming. And that's how a lot of things get missed. And I know that it's, um, it's personally draining upon them because they want to be able to do everything, but you just you, you just can't, right? You have a yes, thousand yes. patients in response. How do you remember everything? How do you do everything? So um, I'm grateful for this platform. I think it's going to really, really bridge the gap. And I'm praying that um, Ghanaians who are listening here will encourage their family members back home, you know, just let them try the app out. I personally try, tried it myself, you know, and for some of my people back home and it works. Um, it's, a, it's a good solution to healthcare. It's a now solution. Um, a lot of things that people go to the clinic for or go to the hospital are very, very minor anyway, you know, for the most part, because people right. like to use, right. their own, you know, herbal medicines and the rest. So give it a shot. One Ghana CD and see, you know, see what it does for you. So I, I'm excited about it. Me too. Me too. Any closing remarks from you, Dr. Afford? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. um, I'd like to thank anyone that tuned in today to support us. Of course, um, Health Talk is here to stay. We, we're going to be giving you guys all the different topics every now and then. Um, today's topic was basically on telehealth medicine. And, and, and I mean, it's something that is coming to stay. Be I mean, what made it easier is the COVID pandemic, right? Yeah. Uh, before the COVID pandemic, everybody was scared about Zoom and all these, you know, platforms. But now it's just, 
you just wake up and you just hop into a Zoom conference, right? So technology has come closer than we thought. So I will not be surprised, you know, now he talked about wearing a, a watch or a probe that mm -hmm. can actually get your, your vitals. Very soon there will be, you know, digital ways of examining people uh, and getting the actual um, results. So we are more connected than what we think we are. And, and COVID has taught us that, that if one person get infected, you, you, you actually risk of getting infected with other people. It tells you how close we are physically and also uh, digitally. So in closing, I'll say stay safe, wear your mask. Uh, if you have the opportunity to get the vaccine, please do. Uh, call your nearest um, health department to give you more directions on what to do when it comes to vaccines. Thank you very much. Viewers, once again, I'd like to just thank everyone for joining us every other Thursday as we bring this very, very valuable program to you. I will just like to say in closing, as Dr. Afori said, let us just remember to keep safe. Recommendations from the CDC have said that we should double mask. Remember to wear your surgical mask and then put your cloth mask on it. Make sure that you're using hand sanitizer. After you use hand sanitizer for maybe three or four times, find running water and wash your hands. Also, remember not to spread false news. If you want to know anything about COVID-19, the best place to go is the CDC website or the WHO organization. We love you all and we thank you once again for joining us. Big shout out to our sponsors, Ghana National Council, Omama TV, Holiday Africa, and Trend Africa TV. God bless you all and have a wonderful night until next week, next, next week, Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Entertainment and sports, oh, maka maka. I say politics, maka maka. Royal black dishes, eh. I say me safwa, be I say me puno. Sane pi a de kami, eko me ya koto kumi, eko me ya mi sebe. You want love fake hanye, maka maka. Royal black dishes, diaba, maka maka. All the trending issues, maka maka. I say politics, maka maka. Entertainment and sports, oh, maka maka. RBJ diaba, we ye fu from kra. I say mi safwa, ye I say mi puno. Sa say mi no ba, ye di ye beka. Se mi ye beti no, sa pe 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 na ye beka no. Maka maka, I can't stand it when they walk. What by you no need one, na je no na ke. What by you no need one, na je no na ke. Say your politics ah, R B J beka, oh beka. Say your sports ah, R B J beka, oh beka. Entertainment too eh, R B J beka, oh beka. Trending issues, R B J beka, oh beka. Maka maka ye dia ba o ye beka Maka maka ye dia ba o ye beka Royal black is a dia ba o ye beka Royal black is a dia ba o ye beka Asembi safwa bie asembi bu Sane pi ya de kami Eko me ya koto kumi Eko me ya mi segbe You want love make a hangi Maka maka Royal black is the city of Maka Maka All the trending issues Maka Maka I say politics Maka Maka Entertainment and sports Maka 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 Royal Black is a diaba, maka maka. Entertainment and sports, oh, maka maka. I say politics, maka maka. Royal Black is a maka maka. Royal Black is a diaba, maka maka. Entertainment and sports, oh, maka maka. I say politics, maka maka. 
Royal Black Kisses. Kamaka. Royal Black Kisses, the Abba. Maka, maka. Entertainment and sports. Oh. Maka, maka. I say politics. Maka, maka. Maka, maka. Royal Black Kisses, the Abba. Maka, maka. Entertainment and sports. Oh. Maka, maka. I say politics. Maka, maka. Royal Black Kisses. Let's join the witty and blunt Empress Mousy on the Mousy Talk Show as she sits with legends, trailblazers, social media celebrities, musicians, and many, many more this and every Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time on Trend Africa TV. It is going to be fun packed. You don't want to miss this. Trend Africa TV, redefining Africa. To advertise with us, donate sponsorships and suggestions. Email us at trendafricatv at gmail.com or call us on 773-312-0318 or 773-756-6678. Remember to also follow and like us at Trend Africa TV on Facebook so you can always catch us live. On Instagram as Trend Africa TV 123 or subscribe to our YouTube channel as Trend Africa TV and click on the notification button to watch previous shows. You can also visit our website for your African news, entertainment, fashion, and sports updates on www.trendafricaonline.net. Trend Africa TV, redefining Africa. <laughs> 